Okay, um, there's some trends within these groups. As we look at the alkali metals going down, um, we see that atomic radius increases, um, the density increases. We also see that the reactivity increases. So why do you think the reactivity increases? What do the alkali metals do when they react and form compounds? Do they form covalent compounds or ionic compounds? They form ionic compounds. So in order for an alkali metal to react, it has to form an ion, right? It forms an ion by losing an electron. Ionization energy is the energy needed to take the electron off. So as you go down the alkali metals, what happens to the ionization energy? So the, the, the atoms are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's easier to take one of my kids than my friend who only has one kid, right? So it's easier to remove an electron from the larger alkali metals at the bottom. So it's much easier for them to react. So they are more reactive, okay? Um, we're going down the column, we see ionization energy decreases. That goes directly with the increase in reactivity. Electron affinity generally would go opposite of the ionization energy. So um, the electron affinity is, is going to be less. The melting point is going to be less. Um, in general, these have very low ionization energies. They're good re uh, reducing agents because they're easy to oxidize. Oxidation is loss of electrons. When it becomes a cation, it's oxidized. Um, they make compounds that are generally soluble in water. But because they're very reactive, you don't go mining for sodium. Right? You don't find chunks of sodium laying around. Sodium will react with the moisture in the air. If it rains on a chunk of sodium, you're going to have a fire on your hands. Right? Very, very reactive stuff. Um, they react with nonmetals like halogens. Um, so here, an alkali metal such as sodium, lithium, will react with a halogen like chlorine or iodine and form an ionic compound. They react explosively with water because one of the products is hydrogen gas. And it's an exothermic reaction, and it generates enough energy that it ignites the hydrogen gas. And as you go down, they're more reactive. So Lithium will fizz, and you'll see some the hydrogen gas. Um, sodium, you'll have a flame here. Potassium's like shh, all over the place. So lithium doesn't have enough energy to ignite gas. Yeah, lithium's probably not going to give off enough heat to spontaneously ignite the the hydrogen. So, so it's still exothermic. Yeah. It's still exothermic, yeah, but it's just not as vigorous. And you go down, you know, further, like you know, rubidium and cesium. Those guys are it's crazy dangerous. The halogens have some trends as well. Going down, we see that the atomic radius increases. Uh, density and melting point e increase as well. You can tell that with the melting points by looking at their states at room temperature. The smaller ones are gases, and the larger ones are solids. They have high electron affinities. Um, they're good oxidizing agents because they're very easy to reduce. Reduction is gain of electrons. Halogens gain electrons easily. Um, they're also very reactive. You don't find them uncombined in nature either. Um, and their compounds are also generally soluble. So they react with metals, um, like the alkali metals, to form metal halides. Um, so depending on what this metal is, um, you might have a one-to-one -one ratio or some other ratio. They will react with hydrogen to form hydrogen halides. If those are dissolved in water, they are acids. Um, writing balanced chemical equations. OK, the reaction between aluminum metal and chlorine gas. Well, how would we do this? This seems kind of hard, but it's actually not that bad. So aluminum, metal, and chlorine gas. What's the formula for chlorine gas? Cl2. It's a diatomic element. What are those going to do? They're going to make an ionic compound. 
right? That's about the only thing we can do, can do with him. What's the charge on an aluminum ion? Three plus. What's the charge on a chloride ion? Negative one. Okay. Well, there's two chlorines, but they're each negative one. So I'm going to put these together. I've got one Al and three Cls to have the charges add up to zero. So I look at the the elements and I say, okay, well these could these could ionize, and I've got a metal and a non-metal. I'm going to make an ionic compound. Predicted charges from the periodic table. Use the charges to predict the formula for the compound that forms. And then we need to balance the reaction. Now, this is not happening in water. This is a solid and a gas. There's no water around. Is aluminum chloride, an ionic compound, going to be a solid, a liquid, or a gas at room temperature? It's going to be a solid. Ionic compounds, ionic bonds are very, very strong. Ionic compounds have very high melting points. So we're going to predict that's a solid. And we need to balance the equation. Um, the aluminums are fine, but we've got three chlorines here and two there. So if I double this, it becomes an even number. And then I can put a three here. I've got six on each side, and I put a two there. Um, let's look at lithium metal and liquid water. Well, hmm. That one's going to be a little tougher, right? So we might need to peak. So we'll go back here and see what do the alkali metals do with water? Well, they're going to make metal ions and hydroxide ions and hydrogen gas. So the lithium is going to become an ion. What ion? What's the charge on a lithium ion? Plus one. This is in liquid water, so then that's aqueous. And it's going to make hydroxide ion. Because really, we're, what we're doing is we're thinking of water as being hydrogen and hydroxide. So we got hydroxide ions. We need some space. Come on. Get some hydroxide ions. Those are going to be aqueous. And then we're going to get hydrogen gas. I would only expect the A students to be able to pull this one off on an exam. I'm going to balance this stupid thing. Everything's fine except the hydrogens, right? I've got three hydrogens over there and two over there. So, well, let's, let's put a two here, because then I'll have four hydrogens, and I could put a two over here and have four hydrogens. And then I've got two oxygens, two oxygens, and the lithium's fine. Do something like that. How about gaseous hydrogen and liquid bromine? What's the formula for bromine? Br2. Br2. Well, how could we put those two together? They, they're going to make probably a gas, um, but it's, if it were dissolved in water, it would be an acid. So if it was an acid, it would be H plus and Br minus. You would predict this product as if it was an ionic compound. So this would make HBr. And you'd need a 2 here. It would be hydrobromic acid if it was dissolved in water, but it's not dissolved in water. So it's probably a gas. I wouldn't expect you to know that. Is that probably. Because <laughs> think about it. HBr, when dissolved in water, is an acid. What's inside your nose? 
moist tissue, right? There's, there's moisture in your nose. So you breathe in the HBr and it dissolves in the mucus in your nose, making an acid, which burns like heck. Yeah, that's bad. It's not good. Okay, um, did that. Ooh, scared myself. Yay! Okay, trends in the noble gases, kind of similar. Um, exceptionally unreactive. Okay, this is different than all the other elements. These are only found unreacted. There are not naturally occurring noble gas compounds. We can make them, but um, there were none that no were even known to exist before the 1960s. So that was the first, first one that was synthesized. They, they're often used as an inert atmosphere. So if you've got like cesium or something that's going to react violently with pretty much anything, and you don't want to put it in something like oil to keep it away from the air, you can put it in a container filled with a noble gas. The noble gas won't react with it. So is that how they contain radioactive material? Um, that's not how they can contain radioactive material, because the radioactive material um, just reacts all by itself. It's not reacting with anything. It's just spontaneously shooting particles out of its nucleus. It's bad stuff. And so you, there's different ways to contain it, but yeah, noble gases don't help. 